Welcome, welcome. So today we're going to be talking about lab-grown meats and animal-derived products, the potential harms and benefits. Student credits, thank you for your contr contributions. Featuring student speakers, Dean Bravo, Kimberly Monahan, me, Selena Late Lakesek, and Jamie Wudo. Slides made by Kimberly Monahan, Maria, and Shaka. So before we get started, we'd love to share our rap song introduction video, and we hope you enjoy. Yeah, okay, organic base, this is what you need. Uh, take you to the future, live a life that can be disease free. All these toxins are taxing on our bodies, no doubt. All these GMOs and these processed foods we can live without. Yeah, yeah, wanna see you live a long time. Contaminants in our water and our food supply. From the meat to the dairy and the fish, what a shame. Not realizing that my insides were inflamed. Hold up, hold up. I know it's hard to digest, that's right. I found an organic plant based website. I even got the app. Yo, this is where it's at. Promoting a healthy life, it's time to put it on the map. Swage, trust you don't want to miss It's time for you to be your best, be your healthiest uh, Assuaged, trust you don't want to miss It's time for you to be your best, be your healthiest Hey, Assuaged, let's go Is lab-grown food the future? As technology continues to advance, new discoveries are uncovered. Since 2013, lab-grown foods, specifically cultured meat, has been gain gaining funding and attention. Meat and dairy products are the two main lab-grown foods currently in development. So in order to create lab-grown alternatives, also known as cellular argiculture, one of two processes is typically followed. The food is either grown directly from animal cells or via microorganisms through fermentation. Producing meat in a new way. Future Meat Technologies is an industry's leading company and they have just opened the world's first industrial cultured meat facility. Cultured meat is lab grown. Meat is produced by vitro cell cultures of animal cells rather than meat obtained by slaughtering and raising livestock. So let's talk about Future Meat Technologies. Future Meat Technologies is a food tech company that was founded in 2018. The culture meat technology is based on award-winning work of Professor Yaakov Namas at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. Future Meat Headquarters is located in Israel. Future Meat Technology is focused on developing a distributive platform for the cost-efficient, GMO-free production of meat directly from animal cells without the need to raise or harvest animals. Future Meat Technologies offers a vision of sustainable, cost-effective agriculture to meet the protein demands for future generations. So Future Meat Technologies continued. We're going to go a little more in-depth with this specific company that's making lab-grown meat. So, Future Meat Facility can currently produce cultured chicken, pork, and lamb with the use of an animal serum or genetic modification, non-GMO, and is currently working on their cultured beef. Future Meat Technologies' unique platform enables production cycles to work about 20 times faster than tra traditional animal agriculture. Future Meat Technology is the first company in the industry to break a price record, producing cultured chicken breasts for only $3.90. The price in cultured meat is um, a big issue at the moment that these companies are currently trying to lower um, to increase the likelihood of consumers actually buying this genetically modified meat. So as Future Meat Technology progresses with scale, prices will continue to drop, making cultured meat affordable worldwide. So here's a quote from Future Meat's website. At Future Meat, we have the power to rapidly scale non-GMO, sustainable, clean, cultured meat production by the year of 2023. So we may be seeing all this in our grocery store soon. 
How is lab-grown meat made? Fresh muscle is collected from the biopsy of a living cow. Cells are removed from their position in muscle fiber during an enzymatic process. Cells are cultured in high serum concentrations. This multiplies the number of cells. Cells are then submerged in a collagen gel. The cells organize into a donut-shaped muscle fiber. Muscle fibers are harvested after three weeks. Benefits of future meat technologies. It is cruelty free. No animals will be harmed, exploited, or slaughtered. Expected to generate 80% less greenhouse emissions. Expected to use 99% less, less land. Uh, it is expected to use 96% less fresh water compared to traditional meat production. Can reduce the spread of infectious disease that commonly develop in livestock. Future Meat Technology states the nutritional value of their lab-grown meat is 100% the same as traditional meats. Different types of lab-grown food. As stated, the two main types of lab-grown food currently in development are meat and dairy. Lab milk, a drink that uses two of milk's main proteins, uh, yeast fermented whey and cassian to create a product that closely resembles cow's milk without any animals, greenhouse gases, or feedlots. Lab beef or poultry seafood. The meat is made by taking a muscle sample from an animal, then technicians collect stem cells, multiply them dramatically to allow for them to differentiate into primitive fibers that bulk up to form muscle tissue. This can eliminate much of the unethical treatment of animals raised for food. Most of meat says that one tissue sample from a cow can yield enough muscle tissue to make 80,000 quarter pounders. Cons of lab-grown meat. Firstly, more research studies are needed to prove that lab-grown meat is meat is safe to consume. Much is unknown to the public about these lab-grown meat companies' processing methods, but their public patents have raised some concern. It was revealed that in the creation of the lab-grown meat uh, market, uh, cancer-causing cells were used in the process. Uh, this process could promote the development of cancer-like cells in lab-cultured meat products. It is believed that other growth factors in the lab-grown meat can be absorbed into the bloodstream, resulting in other health issues. Although companies like Future Meat Technologies claim to be cruelty-free, many other producers extract animal cells from living animals. This is typically done via biopsy, a painful and uncomfortable procedure that uses large needles. Cons continued, so when we look at the cons, we find more. Another major issue associated with lab-grown meat is contamination. When implementing processing methods such as cell lines and or culture medium, the risk of contamination increases. Unlike animals, individual cells don't have a functioning immune system. This results in a likelihood of bacterial or, or fungal growth myocoplasma and other human pathogens growing in bats of cells. While meat cu lab cultured meat companies emphasize that this type of meat production would be more sterile than traditional animal agriculture, it is unknown how true how that is true without the use of antibiotics or some other pharmaceutical means of pathogenic control. What about plant based meat? Plant based meat is not the same as lab based meat. Instead, it replicates the text, taste and texture of actual beef, sausage, and other meats without using any animal products. They achieve this using special recipes and cooking procedures. For instance, one common company ferments genetically engineered yeast to create hem, or heme, a uh, protein that's crucial to duplicating the juiciness, flavor, and color of red meat. What about plant-based meat? Well, unlike lab-grown meat, most plant-based meats are considered vegan. If you want to try plant-based meat for yourself, the two biggest brands, Impossible Foods and Beyond Meat, are available at select supermarkets and restaurants across the United States. The Hazard Analysis Critical Control Point The Hazard Analysis Critical Control Point concept is a systematic science-based process control system for food safety. This concept forms the basic structure of a preventative system for the safe production of meat products. Note that the key to this system is that it is a preventative approach to producing the safest possible meat products for human consumption. 
This means that potential biological, physical, or chemical food safety hazards, whether they naturally occur in food, are contributed by the environment or are generated by a deviation in the production process, are prevented, eliminated, or reduced to produce safe meat products. The new USDA regulations required establishment of four new programs, three as pathogen reduction measures and one for HACCP. The first program required that each establishment develop and implement written sanitation standards operating procedures, known as SSOPs. Next, regular microbial testing for generic E. coli was required for slaughter establishments to verify the adequacy of a plant's process controls for the prevention and removal of fecal contamination and associated bacteria. The third program, all slaughter plants and plants that produced raw ground products were required to meet pathogen reduction performance standards for salmonella. For the fourth program, and lastly, all meat and poultry plants were directed to develop and implement HACCP programs. In conclusion, food technology is revolutionizing the way we eat, and lab-grown meat is on the horizon. Artificial meat uses animal stem cells from real animal muscle to grow meat in the lab. Clean meat enthusiasts say producing meat in this way will help reduce the amount of land, water, and food necessary to feed cattle. Currently, however, the ingredients required for lab-grown meat still kills animals. Lab-grown meat is still too expensive to be mass-produced, but it's likely that will change in the next five years or so as viable alternatives to animal-based serums become available. There's also confusion about whether lab meat will be labeled as such and who will be in charge of regulating this new food group. Ultimately, it's likely that artificial meat will have more of an impact in places like the U.S. and Europe and not necessarily developing countries, where the need is probably greatest for meat alternatives. Time for discussion. We will now be starting a discussion based off of today's topic, some challenge questions too. We encourage you to participate in this discussion by sharing your thoughts and ideas. We will be reading viewers' comments and our team of students will be discussing these responses as well as adding our thoughts. Okay, so first uh, discussion question, is lab-grown meat vegan? So no. As Dean and Jamie both mentioned, um, lab-grown meat is not vegan because it still harms animals. So the best medium for growth is fetal bovine serum, which is made of the blood of, of a dead calf, which makes it unacceptable for vegans to consume. However, researchers are working on alternatives that would replace the need for FBS. And also, as Dean mentioned, um, a plant-based meat that you could try is beyond or impossible meat if you really want to try some meat. <laughs> I, I love that. You know, I, I was talking to a student the other day, and I can't think of who told me that Beyond Beef and Impossible were not lab-grown, but I was, like, kind of scared that it was because it's, like, so identical, but apparently Beyond Beef is pea protein and Impossible is soy. Um, but, by the way, mixing the two together is, like, the most amazing burger you could make. Um, but yeah, I mean, those are great alternatives, but this lab-grown stuff is a little scary, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, the way I look at it, I look at it from like di two different standpoints and like eat both ways, it's not vegan. Like from a public health standpoint, like it's, it's awesome. I mean, you know, it's really good that it's like way better for the environment than, um, than actual meat. And it's going to, I mean, it's, it's technically, you know, a step forward because it is, like they said, 99% less land and resources and stuff like that. But um, at the same time, um, it's it's still, like, it's still the same ingredients. And like, we want, like, we're advocate for a plant-based food system and plant-based foods because that's actually what will heal us and, like, prevent diseases and, like, that's better for you. And also from, like, a vegan ethical standpoint, um, like, a big part of, uh, veganism is the way people think like everybody um, a lot of people are speciesists so they don't consider animals 
you know, as important as humans or, or like they don't consider their contributions to the planet. They just see them as, um, you know, as a commodity or like to be exploited. And in the vegans, the vegan state of mind is that, you know, all animals and non-human animals, like we're all here together. So like, we want the philosophy of veganism, you know, we want people to realize like this, this is the same thing. Basically, we're still using animals like to have, we still using our dominion, dominion over animals to, you know, exploit them. And that's not what we want. You know, we would, we want to move, shift towards a vegan plant-based world. And this is, um, you know, it sounds like a lot to go around it when we just have the answer right here, the plant-based system where we, when like, we can just go there, but they still want to exploit animals, you know? So that's how I feel about it. <laughs> the, the philosophy of it. So, yeah. I think from a holistic nutrition point of view, um, it's kind of getting farther away from how our bodies were created to be able to process plant foods and everything. So when we move into growing things into a lab, are there going to be any repercussions years or generations down the road? How is it going to affect us? There's so many questions um, that need to be answered. And I'm afraid we may not find out until years or generations down the road what those effects may be on our DNA, if, if any. And so um, there's just question marks people, I think, need to be aware of when they go and they make their decisions for choosing ingredients for their meals. Yeah, you know, Kimberly and I were talking about this the other day, the Hunger Games, you know, how all those GMO bees came around, and uh, there's just so much scary elements behind anything that's fake, right? So if it's fake, what if it turns your DNA cells into fake GMO cells? So that's just something that I wanted to weigh in. Dean, what do you think? Yeah, I, I'm kind of... Uh concern about the lab food, I don't think I'd be the first to run and go buy it. Uh, I'd much rather stick with um, if the impossible foods or, um, you know, what's out there right now for vegans. Um, yeah, lab lab meat, I won't be running out to buy that too quickly. I'm, I'm, I need to hear a lot more research on that. Yeah, I also agree with you guys that just hearing lab grow meat is kind of, kind of scary. Like, I honestly didn't have um, much knowledge that they were even that there were companies out there trying to make lab grown meat. So I just think that's really like interesting. And I saw a headline: "Is lab grown food the future?" Because um, if they could successfully produce this kind of meat, and if they get enough funding and prices go down enough, who says they won't continue making lab grown food? Are they going to do lab grown fruits and vegetables? You know. Will it be, since it's so much faster, um, I know they said for the meat, it's a faster turnaround time to, instead of raising um, animals, you just kind of took, it took three weeks versus three months. So it might be even quicker to do it with fruits and vegetables. And again, who knows what kind of effect that could really have on our body if it's not organic. Okay, question two. Um, what food companies are producing lab-grown meat? So we have the Art Meat Gourmet Butcher, so based in Russia and produces cultured horse. Ugh. Its technology is based on growing cells in a bioreactor and 3D printing those cells into the shapes desired, such as a steak or a filet. Art Meat claims that its horse meat takes steak takes as little as three weeks to produce, as Kimberly said, compared to the 33 months that it takes for a horse to get impregnated, give birth to a foal, and raise that foal into an adult horse. Adult horse. The company has plans to bring its horse meat and sturgeon fillets to market in 2023. Vow was founded in 2018 and based in Australia. It is focused on finding the best tasting, unique lab grown meat out there by experimenting with animal species that are not typically eaten. Cultured kangaroo is their most popular cultured meat, but they are experimenting with alpaca, lamb, rabbit, rabbit and goat. And chiok meat seafoods reinvented. So based in Singapore, it's focused on producing lab-grown shrimp meat. They have received $20.4 million in investments and have paired up with a Japanese company, Integriculture, to lower the cost of cultured meat. They currently cost $5,000 to make one kilogram of cell-based shrimp, with a projected drop in cost to $50 per, per kilogram in the next future. Ooh. 
it's kind of it's scary that they're you know using these um exotic animals that aren't typically eaten i mean i know those countries probably eat more of those but it's just it's it's just scary i don't even know what else to say about it yeah like all of you said about lab grown meat being being not safe and um oh i just want to mention real quick that there's um there's a lot of like stories in media like about the future and like there's like they have lab grown stuff like and there's this art installment um, I don't know if, if you've heard of it, but it's, like, the most interactive, um, it's, like, I don't know how to explain it, but there's a place in Las Vegas called Area 15, and they have the art collective called Meow Wolf, Meow Wolf, and they, it's a parody based on, um, uh, like, fake foods that are grown in the lab, and I, my sticker on my water bottle, this is one of the foods that came to life. It was like a banana, but it's like a banana Scorpio. I mean, do you see it? <laughs> so it's like a vegan parody about food, and they talk about meat and like lab grown stuff, and like it's a whole grocery store, and it's just it's crazy. There's one in Albuquerque too, but um, I feel like only people who are like really into food or like veganism like they understood the full message of of it. <laughs> But basically, that was like the main message was that uh, lab grown meat is going to, you know, it was also about like capitalism and and like indigenous rights and all that stuff. But like mostly, the main focus was that we're kind of screwed if we keep doing this with our food, and it like mutated and it gave people health problems and like it was, right. it, was crazy. it was it's crazy. If you ever go to Vegas, um, if you I, I, I did, instead of like going out, this is what I did. I went to like art museums. <laughs> So this is, um, it's called Meow Wolf in Area 15, and there's one in Albuquerque too, and they're making one in Colorado. Basically, a lot of the, like, natural places in, in the U.S., like the deserts and stuff that are getting, like, I don't know, it's, it's, it's a lot to explain, but you have to see it. It's crazy. It, they talk about this, and it's, it's insane because nobody realizes this is actually happening. So, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh. We used to live in Vegas for three years, and I, I'm just going to have to look all this stuff up. Yeah, that's crazy. I do know. It's like I do raw juicing twice a week, and it gives me four days of juice, and it's whole. I do organic vegetables, and it takes a while. But, you know, I am look at my skin, and it's all natural, and I feel good. But on the contrary, when I was sick and I was on 14 daily prescription drugs and I was eating, you know, cupcakes with milk for breakfast in the morning, all these um, unorganic, unhealthy foods, like anything that comes in a box or a package has preservatives, probably about 1,500 preservatives that are not required to be reported on the actual label. So these are preservatives meant to extend the shelf life. So in that you're getting in organic, unbiological contaminants that you're consuming, not natural for the body. So what's the difference between that already being an issue, GMOs, soy and corn are among the most contaminated forms of food. So if you're going to eat soy or corn, it's always important to get certified organic so you know that there's no laced GMOs. But, yeah, I mean, what, you know, going into this and, and the fact that lab grown so much more expensive, it sounds, than killing an animal, wow, food for thought. I just wanted to uh, chime in. Uh, there was a, uh, something I read in a nutritionist once. A nutritionist said something that go by. It was the longer the shelf life, the shorter your life. So. Yeah, like that Chef Boreal D ravioli. Yeah. If it sits forever, it'll probably kill you. So you got to eat stuff that, like, you know, is not good by the end of the week type stuff. Fresh veggies, fresh meat, etc. If you're a meat eater. Uh, if not, fresh veggies and, and vegan products, too. Well, you yeah, can me. Or, sorry, Kimberly. No, don't worry. <laughs> I was just going to say I totally agree with you there, Dean. Um, <laughs> I just think it's so crazy. Um, that one company, Vow was just really interesting to me, just going out of the box, experimenting, trying to find the different meats that are good. When I was researching, I saw it uh, stated that there's only four species of animals that make up like 90% of the meat out there. So I was like, you know what, I guess that's a pretty good idea. Like they're trying something new, seeing, seeing what else is out there, you know, 
it seemed like, you know, such a great idea, but back to that lab grown food and even just, I'm sure there would have to be so many chemicals, food, like food additives to make it actually work. So it's a no for me. Yeah, I feel like there's like no animal in the whole world that's not exploited at this point, you know, like every animal we exploit for something, um, you know, or most, at least most animals. And animals we haven't even heard of. Yeah, <laughs> like I mean, before COVID, I never heard of the pangolin, but that's um, the pangolin, the one with the scales, and that's one of the most exploited animals in the world because um, a lot of countries sell their scales for like gross, dumb reasons, and because they think it's medicinal. And like, I've never even heard of this animal, um, no, but it came up with COVID because it's either co either pangolins or bats are like the source for COVID. So because it's a zoonotic disease, so it's just crazy, like, all the animals we eat that the world exploits for money, for profit, so. So sad. Okay, so what companies make lab-grown dairy products? Brave Robot claims to be a vegan ice cream company that is pioneering a new animal-free dairy. They use whey protein found in the ice cream, and it is made from microbial fermentation. Grater's new Perfect Indulgence line and Swedish-style ice cream brand Nix are using the same technology to create cultured ice cream. Many, sta uh, many say that the cultured dairy used in these ice cream brands taste identical to traditional dairy products. Perfect Day uses microbes such as fungi, bacteria, or yeast, and adds DNA sequences that are 3D printed to produce proteins and fats found in milk. Per Perfect Day claims to be grass, which is generally recognized as safe, and when FDA, FDA reviewed this claim, they had no objections and felt no need to further analyze or test these claims. This is crazy because I actually ran into Brave Robot recently um, for the first time. Like, I didn't even know about lab-grown dairy. I only knew about lab-grown meat, and I didn't think it was out yet. And there's actually um, a vegan restaurant, uh, like 30 minutes from me and it's like, uh, pizza and pasta. And like, I love taking my family there, but I, I, I never went in. I, I usually have like whoever per the person I'm with usually like runs in and gets it. And that's happened to this time. And my girlfriend went in and she was just so like shook. And I was like, what happened? And she said that they had the, I, the brave, is it, what did I say? Brave robot. And they were trying, and like, it says on their vegan, like, yeah, it claims to be vegan. And, and I was, we were just shook, like, off, and like, they tried to, they were trying to advertise it. That, that was just a sketchy place, honestly, like, um, around where I live, a lot of the, some of the vegan restaurants are vegan because they're religious, which, you know, that's its own thing. But they were like, very, like, trying to give her brochures and trying to give her the ice cream. And she was like, oh, no, like, I just want to <laughs> But it was, anyways, it was weird. I'm not going to come, I'm not going to go support that business anymore because they claim that's vegan and obviously it's not. So I guess they're just like vegan for health, like, um, which doesn't even make sense because it's dairy. Like it's the same, uh, come up, same thing as dairy. So I don't know why. I don't really, I just, maybe they don't know what it is and they're just carrying it. I don't know. But I just can't believe it's real. And I think my friend saw it at Sprouts and we were like talking about it. And I was like, I was telling them that I'm really against this and for multiple reasons. And they're like, Oh, but I think it's a good thing because of the environment. And I said, yeah, but this is, you know, this is what we should be aiming for. Like I said earlier, we should be aiming for plant-based because that's what the real health is. And that's where the real, that's what the real solution is. And like all of you are saying, yeah, it's, it's just so crazy like I, I just can't get over it when I saw it I was like no way like <laughs> but I guess it's out <laughs> I I would just like to point out if, if I walk into a place and they told me their food was made on a 3d printer I'd probably just turn around and walk out everyone's trying to 3d print everything these days and uh you know they're even 3d printing firearms now that are like used in like active shootings and stuff well I've not had you know some things I'll listen to, you know, maybe the lab food, maybe in the future, but a 3D printed food, sorry, I'm, I'm not interested. So. What is a 3D? Oh my gosh, a 3D printer? A three course meal? I could go print a three course meal right now and eat it. Is that what we're talking about right now? Just make sure your printer's clean, will you? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. 
gosh, you guys. No, this that's what I was saying, the brave robot. I shared it in a group the other day, and me and Kimberly were talking, and all these people are coming at me, and I'm like, it says milk protein on the ingredient, so it's not vegan. Uh, but then people were, you know, sending me, like, these research reports, and, you know, it's lab you know, dairy, and I'm just like, again, you guys, it's not natural, it's not going to fuel your body in ways that you hope, and, you know, how, how ironic is it, you know, before we, you know, all of us were unhealthy at one point, we had to have been, okay, we, we become a better version of ourselves, and we decide not to buy foods that are harmful, why? Because we actually start reading the ingredients, right? I never read the ingredients before, I was like, oh, whatever, that looks good. Uh, so I do now, and it's completely different, and, but this is not natural, and it's still exposing animals, whether you think it's saving the planet or, or not, it's still a form of animal cruelty, and there's testing, and there's you know processes that we're not seeing, we're not on the back end of all of this. I think uh, kind of like what several of you mentioned, we're moving away again from the plant base and the, and the things our body needs and we're trying to make it in a, a lab and so many different ways that people eat for a variety of reasons, whether it's vegan or gluten free, the industries get on board and they start processing things and trying to put cheaper products out there and they may have their own reasoning why and they may feel like they're doing it for moral reasons but in the end somebody's making a profit in the end where is this going to put our health and so i think we should really just stick to natural plants and again i think people need to be aware that this stuff is out there because someone may be very interested in it and not fully understand what the impact is on either side of the equation. Yeah, I totally agree with you on that. And just something that really shocked me is just the fact that it claims to be vegan. Um, like it's a lab grown chemical that's in there. And I don't think consumers are um, like the companies being transparent with their consumers because it's someone's vegan and maybe they're a new vegan, they're not um, aware of all these different fruit products. They just might pick that up off the shelf and and eat it and not really knowing that it was made in the lab. And I think um, customers have the right to know where their food's coming from, especially if it's lab grown and a new, a new thing that there probably isn't that much research on. So yeah, it's, it's really scary. Be funny if you're just sitting around, you got a 3D printer behind you, and it's like, oh, I'm hungry, and just type something in on your computer and it prints you your lunch. Wouldn't that be convenient? You know? I could see that <laughs> being in the future. I think, I, think, I think Kimberly probably figure out a way to do that with her computer skills. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> So not natural. So <laughs> not natural, guys. Oh my gosh. It's like, are we really talking about this right now? Right. right? Yeah. Crazy. All right. So next question, number four. So when will lab-grown meat be available in the U.S. grocery stores? So there's no official date on the launch of lab-grown meat in our country. However, it hopes to trial this, uh, the steak in high-end restaurants in the U.S., Europe, and Asia in 2021. So this year, with an official launch in restaurants and supermarkets in 2023. So, yeah, the future is now, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, that's crazy. Um, and, you know, I just think I get the animal cruelty side of it. And, you know, they're trying to expand in the horizons of us not doing this animal factory farming, not having the gases going in our environment, not expending all the water that goes into the animal production. There's so many factors that play into not only from harming the animals, but harming the environment while, you know, putting these animal, animals for, through torture, through unimaginable in, abuses. I mean, if you watch some of these documentaries, you cannot fathom what these animals experience. But then, you know, these lab-grown meats are kind of becoming acceptable because it's a it's a better way to treat our animals but is it a better way to treat us organically is it something 
that's going to allow us to be nourished and uh, are we going to get the energy we need from it or is it going to fuel our mentality or our physical well-being i mean those are all things we have to consider i was just gonna go off of cynthia's point and like um veganism and plant-based uh food products are like really booming right now which um which you know is a good thing because a lot of people are trying them and being more or like more reluctant or less reluctant to try them because they taste like meat or they taste like foods that they're aware of, you know that they're used to but at the same time it also creates a lot of uh, greenwashing like the green capitalism so like um, like yes these products are better for the environment but at the same time we want whole food plant based items you know we don't want just the junk food like the junk food's good for like you know, for people who are transitioning or for, like, a treat. And, like, they are healthier than animal products, but, like, we want a step further. We want the whole food plant-based, which is what we advocate for. Um, so it's, like, you know, a slippery slope because they're good, but yet at the same time um, they're not good and they're expensive. And, like, even beyond an impossible, like, those are good for every once in a while, but they're not the same as, like, you know, as, um, as, as unprocessed food. But... Uh, at the same time, but because of the the vegan products are booming, like there's obviously going to be like a market against that, and so this is kind of like like what Cynthia was saying, kind of it's like an easier way out. Like it's a little bit better for the environment and humans or, or animals, but not really better for their health. And like we know that the pharmacy, like the farm companies, like it's like billions and billions of dollars in that industry that goes towards us being sick. Like they kind of want us to be sick, so like so we get they get our money. And, like, there's these solutions that are just right there, but, um, you know, we, <laughs> we don't want to go straight to the solutions, and, like, it's just crazy. There's, um, there's another new, uh, a few new, like, meat products that are out, like, there's one called Omnipork. I don't know why it's called Omnipork, and I think it's a bad name choice, but it's, um, it's, like, I think it's healthier than Beyond and Impossible. Like, it's mushrooms. It might be, oh, it might be pea protein as well, but it's mushrooms, and, um, it's, uh, it tastes, there's different, like, forms of it, but there's one that tastes like Spam. Oh, so it's, like, the pork, like, the new pork one. Oh, my gosh, it's really good, because I'm Filipino, so I grew up eating Spam, and, like, I didn't really like meat, but I liked Spam, <laughs> so I tried it recently, and it's really good, but it's, like, why do we have to have the, if we have these plant-based meats that are, like, good, that are still treats, you know, why do we have to still use the animals? So, it's, like, we can't let go of our exploitation, so... I love that concept. You make really great points in that, Selena. And uh, so those are all things we're going to have to consider for not only our own health, but our, our future and, you know, considering the animals and the people and the planet. All right. Next question. Where is cultured meat available for sale? Last year, Singapore granted regular regulatory approval of good meat, which is cultured chicken. So this is the first country in the world to authorize the sale of lab-grown meat. Avant-garde restaurant in 1880 in Singapore was the first to add cultured chicken to its menu. So far, hundreds of diners at 1880 have tasted good meat chicken and the approval ratings are high. So 70% of diners stating that it is good better than good or better than conventional chicken and 90% of diners indicating that they would substitute traditionally raised chicken with cultured meat. Cultured meat. Wow, that uh, is phenomenal Like in terms of how available this stuff is becoming so uh, I'm not again I'm not so sure about how much people are going to become reliant on these foods because they're not organic and so there's going to be some substantial research hopefully that will come to the surface educating people and really just becoming aware of what you're putting in your mouth yes it's more ethical but is it really sustainable and is it something that's going to benefit our health Hopefully, it'll get done, and if it's good for our health, yes. But oftentimes, you have a situation where it's made just because someone will profit from it. Uh, just like NutraSweet is still on the market, and is basically known for being carcinogenic, and also can kill certain people called phenylketonurics, that if they just take one hit of it, they end up in the hospital and probably die. So there's still a long list to be sold. So... Uh, how about we just promote things that are good for people and that are sustainable, but unfortunately our food industry doesn't agree. Uh, they kind of like uh, go for, hey, how much can we make on this? 
before people figure out that it's not good for them. And then even if they find out, we'll just lobby to keep it going anyway. So. Yeah, sure. it really is crazy. I was kind of surprised at um, some of the rates that they found that like 70% of consumers said that they thought it was just as good or even better and 90% indicated they would substitute it. So I thought that was pretty interesting that after trying it, people were okay with it and didn't see and you know, didn't think it tasted bad. So it really is interesting to me that it seems like they could, in Singapore, they're replicating the chicken pretty well. Um, I just hope that there's no bad health um, effects, you know. But maybe it is great, but more research is definitely needed, I think. Uh, Selena, I just want to ask Selena something. You said you're Filipino, right? Mm -hmm. How would your uh, relatives feel about trying to make an adobo with that kind of chicken? Um, okay, so I've been vegan for four years, and <laughs> I've, <laughs> so I have um, already like got my family on, not on board, well, partially. So my mom Good. and my okay. bro my brother, who's uh, well, he's twenty now, but my brother went vegan at eighteen, and my mom mm -hmm. went vegan, and that's um, awesome. Yeah, thank you. So my dad, who's not Filipino, is mm. the like only one who's not <laughs> for it. But and my grandma, who my mom's mom, who's Filipino, she just kind of eats whatever. But mm -hmm. um, my sister's boyfriend, who's also he's part Filipino, but they're not vegan, but they eat a lot mm -hmm. of vegan food because he's mm. severely lactose intolerant. So, mm. but I just want them to go vegan, but <laughs> we'll see. But anyways, he he's, yeah. he's he's really good at cooking, and he he tried to make us like a vegan adobo, and I okay. I loved it. I didn't I, I never really liked adobo. I was always picky my whole life. Like I, uh, mm -hmm. I've always been picky with meat. I thought I was just a picky eater, but it was just mm -hmm. with animal products. Like That's I was meant to be. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, I, like, but like, I had a lot of Filipino I really friends. Liked it. I like the the vegan adobo. We all liked it, but um, mm -hmm. only tried it once though. But there is a vegan. There's a few vegan Filipino uh, restaurants I've I've mm -hmm. been to. Well, either restaurants or like pop up people who have their mm -hmm. own thing. That's there cool. is a restaurant in NorCal called Nix. So if you ever in, I think it's I forgot one of the towns. It starts with a D or something, but it's it's in the Bay Area and it's called mm -hmm. Nix and it's it's really good Filipino nice. food. So nice, cool. I don't I think, about that. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's a few. I don't know the people's names right now, but those are, but it's, it's really good. And like, it's surprising because, you know, a lot of Filipino food is so meaty and like, it is. I never really ate it growing up because I, and so now I can enjoy it. And I'm like, Oh Lola, like I, I ate this vegan Filipino thing. And she's like, Hmm, but she'll still try it. <laughs> she oh, won't go okay. vegan, but she's, I mean, well, you know, but she'll try uh -huh. it. So that's, that's good. And there's um also in LA, there's this, it's not all vegan, but there's a bake, a Filipino bakery with like a lot of vegan stuff. So, because mm -hmm. a lot of people are allergic to like eggs and dairy, so yeah. they're trying to make more, um, more safe foods. So sounds yeah. great. Yeah, yeah. Cool. I, I want to try to get, I want to try to make the double more <laughs> and, and stuff like that. <laughs> stuff. Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> that was a really good question, uh, Dean, because I know uh, Kiss the Monkeys, Raquel is from the Philippines, and so um, she is somewhat you know, plant-based, like, more so than not, but they're not, mm -hmm. like, 100%. I mean, she has her culture, her foods, and, you know, in fact, you know, when they came up here to where we live, there's a, there's no vegan restaurants or anything on the mm -hmm. mountain. We, are, we live in the blue zones. Blue zones, there's five blue zones in the world where people live to be 100. Oh, yeah. And one of them, the only one in the United States is in Loma Linda, California. So we live about 40 minutes away. We go to the blue zone store, all organic, if you're going to get the healthiest variety of milk, it's goat's milk. And, you know, you want to look for those organic labels, same with cheese. So at this Blue Zone store, you see healthier varieties of these foods. They don't have, like, Cheetos or Doritos or any of that kind of stuff. There's processed stuff. It's just healthier processed stuff. Yeah. And, yeah, I mean, but, you know, when we hang out with Kiss the Monkeys, I, I'm not going to lie, when we had, you know, we didn't have the options here on the mountain, um, I ate around the meat. Like, I ate the noodles. I didn't eat the meat or anything, but I ate around it. And, you know, part of me was like, oh, am I being un unethical, but I'm really hungry and there's nothing available. Um, so, I don't know. I just wanted to kind of add that in there. Mm -hmm. 
Awesome. Oh, I actually live there too. Um, me and Cynthia kind of live close to each other. I'm like right. half an hour from from Loma Linda, so I always go to um, Clark's. Clark's is like Clark's? That's the restaurant. The yeah. Store. Yeah, I knew you were talking about Clark's, so I was like, oh, oh I, yes, and like. I love Clark's too because um, so I have a lot of food sensitivities and like they have more um, like substitutes than I've ever even seen. Like I like it's crazy. They have so much gluten free stuff and like grain free and just like um, I mean yeah they do still have meat and stuff. Um, I hate going to grocery store because I'm just like <laughs> but um, there is a, a vegetarian mostly vegan one in um, nearby too in Riverside. So I like to go there too. It's called um, Oasis, Oasis. No, it's uh, in there. La Sierra, La Sierra Natural Foods Market. Yeah, the IE, the Inland Empire has a lot of stuff because, um, like I mentioned, that religion. I think it's um, Loma Linda is a uh, is Latter Seventh Day Adventist. I think so. Um, and like, there's a community in Riverside too that's that religion. So like, a lot of people. Um, it's not just the diet. It's also like their lifestyle, but it's mostly the diet. But um, but it's crazy because when I found out like that you're new here, I was like, "Oh my god, Big Bear!" Like I, it's so close to me. So yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, I've been to Goodwins too over in uh, yeah. Riverside. Yeah. So. Oh, and there's a new one in Redlands. Really? Oh, I love yeah. it. That's closer to us. Oh my gosh, yeah. we're gonna totally have to talk yeah. more. But yeah. you know, this yeah, is we just should meet up in, at, at the Clark's or Goodwins. Yeah, let's do it. We'll totally meet up and we'll show all uh, our favorite foods and. And, you know, Clark's is definitely, uh, we have the store featured in our cartooner, actually. So, um, we've been yeah, going to in the app. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. So exciting. Does anyone have anything to weigh in? Let's go on the next slide. I know we're finishing up here. Question six. Does lab-grown meat age the same way as livestock meat? So, no. Aging depends on auto-digestion and microbial contamination. <laughs> Even though autodigestion is similar to livestock meat, microbial contamination is not. In contrast to livestock meat, lab-grown meat is sterile, leading to longer shelf life and reduced food waste. That sounds so healthy. <laughs> uh, not. Uh, Kimberly, what do you think, love? Definitely don't think it sounds too healthy. You know, the environmental benefits sound really promising and everything, but to just like um, label the, this food as generally recognized as safe, that's scary to me. The fact that other research I've done on food additives, many, many food additives are labeled as generally recognized as safe. That's not too convincing to me, you know? Like, if, if, why is it only generally? More studies should be done to determine whether it is safe or if it is not safe. So it's just, it's weird to me. Very weird. Jamie, I want to hear from you, love. What are you thinking? Mostly speechless, I think, at this point. Um, that there's so much going on, and, and they're taking so many new avenues. And I know there are a lot of people out there who are advocates for technology, and technology can be extraordinary and life-saving. Um, but I think we've also seen it be devastating as well because our bodies are organic. And they're not necessarily meant to consume all these new, fake, really, foods. So, although the idea could be helpful, I'm kind of interested to see where it goes. I'd like to see more research. What do you think, Dean? I know you got something to say. Yeah, I was going to say, um, you know, if you want to make sure something's good or not, try fitting it to your pet. They're usually pretty good at figuring things out. If your cat or dog walks away from it, pretty much just toss it out. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's an amazing point. I love that. Yep. Yeah, I've tried sticking some things on, well, this dog and the dog I had before. And if the dog won't eat it, we won't eat it. So there you go. <laughs> yeah, isn't they that know. Yeah, they do. They definitely mm -hmm. know. Our animals are very intuitive. And yeah, I know our, our animals are organic. We feed them. You know, they're not plant-based. They're not, not meant to be. We don't believe that our dogs are meant to be uh, plant-based. We tried it, and they got very sick. So, um, yeah, yeah. 
So, oh, this is my slide. Ooh. Okay, <laughs> let's discuss amongst ourselves. What do you guys think about cultured meat and dairy? Would you give it a try? Do you think lab-grown food is the future and why? So, uh, just chiming in on, on what I've said, it's not natural, it's not organic. I don't think it's uh, healthy for the body. And, um, you know, just knowing what I've been through, I've been, you know, I was raised on mac and cheese and box foods and canned foods. My mom only cooked every year, Thanksgiving, I think. Uh, and so, you know, I was really raised in a toxic environment, food-wise especially. No, yeah. that, I definitely don't think I'll be trying it. I, like that, uh, several of you, had horrible health issues from eating foods that were made in a plant. Um, I can't imagine foods made in a lab would be any better. And I think I'm just going to stick with the natural stuff to continue healing and, and being healthy and live a nice, long, healthy life. I'm getting oh, hungry. I'm, I'm going to go print myself a cup, a cup of yogurt. Over here. Oh, no, 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 no. Dean, don't print <laughs> anything. Um, so by the way, how much would a 3D printer be? I would like to know because that just... If you could print your own food, I don't know. It's just like eating paper. It blows my mind. Oh, it does. I gotta see it. That seems safe. It. Whose idea? It wasn't anything safe. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Definitely so, wasn't Einstein. Yeah. So for me, um, I mean, I'm, I'm getting my master's in public health because I really believe that veganism and plant-based foods and the plant-based food system, I think that's the future and that's where we should be headed. So well, not, not, green, not lab food. green food. So yeah. Good for you. Good for you. The organic baby. You have an MPH too, don't you? Well, yeah, it's one of your degrees, right? Oh gosh, I got two of those. I should have stopped at the first one. <laughs> I'm going for it <laughs> You can print yourself a couple more degrees, too. It's <laughs> oh, like the more I learn, I'm like, really? Like a light bulb? Because you just don't know a lot of stuff. Like what we're talking about right now, people mm -hmm. wouldn't know. They have to become educated. And yeah. and you know, it's a little hard to do that when all this other you know crap comes around and you're just thinking, well, it's better than harming the animals, so I'll just yes. eat this. But then... It's not really, you're not connecting the dots. So that's what I have to say. <laughs> True. I totally agree with all you guys. I think we're on the same page. <laughs> uh -huh. All right. Well, that was just a, an amazing discussion, you guys. And, and um, thank you so much for everyone who showed up. And I had uh, something that I had to deal with. So we were late on the call, but we made it happen. Um, so, you know, in, I think we're going on the conclusion slide here. Um, yeah, so we have a campaign, Stop the Hate on Delta 8. We would uh, love you to check out the video. Uh, we'll drop comments in the comment section and we'll be reviewing your, your input and what, what you feel. I mean, we're here. If you have a topic you want us to cover, let us know. We're down. We're down for the show. So. All right. In conclusion, thank you. Oh, oh, wait. Thank you. Thank you for joining us, uh, Selena, Jamie, Kimberly, for, uh, you know, especially doing the slideshow. And Dean, you are the man, I think the only thank man you. right now. But it's amazing how you have female and males and and every all diversities, you know, that come together in the inclusion of, of this movement, the vegan movement. But we definitely should be organic about it. So I'm um, sure. just grateful for you guys showing up. And, and thank you. We'll see you next week. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Assuage. This is what you need. So delicious. Gotta get these gummies made with CBD. Yeah. Uh, Assuage. The taste, I know you'll like it. All about a healthy life. It's time to be your highest. Yeah. Helping with stress and helping so many ailments and herbal remedy. Really, it's never failing. It's all vegan. Yeah. Really, it's so amazing. Helping your memory, focus, and your concentration. Uh, mental cognition, boosting productivity. Way better than coffee. Helping manage your anxiety. I know you want it. That's automatic. Don't be a dummy. Pop a CBD study gummy and not an addict. Uh, yeah, a swage. 
this is what you need. So delicious, gotta get these gummies made with CBD. Hey, uh, assuage the taste. I know you'll like it. All about a healthy life. It's time to be your highest. Yeah. If you ain't collagen, you ain't heard about it. Then it's time to get it popping. Really ain't a better option. Yeah. Ain't no need to wait. Come get it today. Uh, time to feel great by choosing Delta Eight. Yeah. Great tasting, feel amazing. CBD gummies. Let's go. 